let us learn about evaporation. What is evaporation? Evaporation is a phenomenon in which liquid changes to vapors. Uh, the same thing happens even in boiling. Then what's the difference? In evaporation, the liquid changes to vapors at any temperature below its boiling point. That's the major difference between evaporation and boiling. So the liquid can turn into gaseous state even if the liquid is not at its boiling point. One very good example of evaporation what we see in our nature is the water cycle. The formation of clouds happens because the water gets evaporated from water bodies that results in the formation of clouds. So that evaporation is a very, very important part of our water cycle. The next major difference between evaporation and boiling is that evaporation is a surface phenomenon. Now what is meant by surface phenomenon? The particles on the surface, the particles on the surface will have higher kinetic energy and they break the attraction between them and get converted into the vapor state. So what happens is the particles on the surface, they start absorbing energy from the surroundings. They take up heat energy from the surroundings and use that heat energy to break the forces of attraction. And they get converted into gaseous state. They move out or they get evaporated into the atmosphere. This happens layer by layer. That's why evaporation is a surface phenomenon. Now say for example if you take water in a container and keep it in the sun for evaporation. After a few days you may see that there may be no water left or very wat less water left in the container. And on the inner sides of the container, you can see uh, you can see the layers. You will be able to see some marks. Those marks indicate that evaporation has taken place layer by layer. So you have one layer of molecules. They absorb heat energy from the surroundings. They get converted into vapors. Then the next layer of molecules gets exposed to the surroundings. Once, once that second layer gets exposed and gets evaporated, then the third layer is exposed to the surroundings. So evaporation takes place layer by layer. It is a surface phenomena. Only the Particles on the surface are absorbing heat energy from the surroundings and they are evaporating. Let us see the differences between evaporation and boiling. Boiling takes place at the boiling point. So that's one major difference. Boiling takes place at definite temperatures that is at boiling point whereas evaporation occurs at all temperatures even uh, if it is less than its boiling point. Usually what happens during boiling we are supplying the heat energy so it's a quick process whereas evaporation is a slow process because it is a natural process. Particles are absorbing energy from the surroundings on their own naturally and they are evaporating so it is a natural process. 
So boiling, we can just say it is change of liquid state to gaseous state. Even here, even here, uh, let me not say water, I'll say liquid because evaporation can take place in any case, in any liquid, uh, not just in water. So evaporation is again change of liquid into vapor state but without boiling. That is before, it before the liquid reaches its boiling point. During boiling, bubbles are formed, whereas during evaporation, no bubbles are formed. Boiling occurs throughout the liquid. Now that we call it as bulk phenomena. Boiling is a bulk phenomena, whereas evaporation takes place only to the exposed surface. That means it is a surface phenomena. So evaporation is a surface phenomena. Boiling is a bulk phenomena. Now, what do you mean by bulk? Here, what happens in case of boiling, you have particles of the liquid and you are supplying energy. So when the process of boiling starts, all the particles here in the liquid, they have same kinetic energy. When the boiling process starts, all the particles here in the liquid, they have same kinetic energy because you are supplying energy. Now that is referred to as bulk phenomena. All the particles involved have same amount of kinetic energy. So it is bulk phenomena, whereas evaporation, I explained it in the previous slide. It happens layer by layer. Only the particles on the surface absorb energy from the surrounding. That means only these particles will have higher kinetic energy, whereas the particles of the liquid, the other particles will have lesser kinetic energy. So on the surface, on the surface, the kinetic energy is increasing. Hence, the attraction can be reduced or broken and the particles turn into vapor state. Boiling source of energy is needed. That is, we need to supply energy. Evaporation causes cooling effect. Now, since the beginning of the video, we are saying this repeatedly that during evaporation, the particles are absorbing energy from the surroundings. These type of processes or reactions are called as endothermic reactions. So evaporation is an endothermic process. Now, since it is absorbing energy from the surroundings, the surroundings lose certain amount of heat energy due to which they become cooler. Now, let us uh, take an example. This is something which uh, all of us might have experienced it. What happens when you pour some acetone on your palm? We no, we suddenly feel very cold. Our palm starts feeling very, very cold. That is because the particles of acetone are evaporating using the using the energy you using the energy or gaining the energy from your palm, which causes your palm to feel cooler. So in order to evaporate, they are taking the heat energy from your body and from the surroundings, which makes your feel, palm feel cooler. Another example, why should we wear cotton clothes in summer? Now, uh, compared to other types of clothes like nylon or anything else, we prefer cotton in summer. That is because during summer, we perspire a lot 
and that is our body mechanism by sweating more our body tries to keep itself cool now this sweat has to be absorbed and exposed to the surroundings it has to evaporate if it does not evaporate and if it stays on our body it gets really itchy and annoying so when we are sweating more in summer cotton is preferred because cotton is a good absorber of water so similarly it absorbs the sweat and it exposes it to the atmosphere for evaporation now when this sweat is getting evaporated it absorbs heat energy from the body sweat being in liquid state it gets evaporated by absorbing latent heat of vaporization from our body so it is using our heat energy our body heat to break the interparticle forces of attraction and it gets converted to gaseous state now since our body is losing the heat energy it feels cooler and this cannot happen when we wear different uh, materials like nylon because nylon is not a good absorber of sweat or water so cotton is preferred in summer